Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching again. I've been working on a new mural project down in the Phoenix area and I'm working alongside of Rich Marks. So you can check out uh, Richard Marks, Rich Marks Studios and I'll put up some links so that you can see his work. He's an awesome mural artist. I'm learning some things. You know, this guy is, a, he's fast. He's like a machine. He's, he gets his mural on the wall. He, he plans it, he draws it, he fills it in, and he gets it done. I, I am impressed with his ability. And so I'm having a, an awesome time, and I want to show you some of the footage that, that we've compiled so far doing this big room with all these different parts of the world represented in it, all of these different landscapes. So I'm mostly doing overhead stuff. I did the sky, still working on the sky, and he's been doing the lower stuff. And you know, we're, we're switching off and on, sharing the work uh, in different places, but uh, this has been a super fun experience. Uh, working with another highly skilled muralist. Not something I get to do real often, you know. I, I make a lot of videos and spend a lot of time by myself researching and so this is um, some cool stuff learning how somebody else is doing it, having good success in the industry. And so hope you enjoy the the video and I'll be eager to show you more progress as we continue moving along on this job. So we've been on this job for just a couple days now, uh, just barely starting out. And so always the first thing that I have to think about when I start a job or that anybody, any muralist, especially when it's at this scale, this is a big room. I mean, we're at several thousand square feet in here and we need gradients in the sky. We need a soft blend from this orange to this a grayish color to a blue and so the way we've accomplished this gradient and what we're continuing to do is by using an airless sprayer and gradually mixing uh, colors that are just going to be rows of color each time we change the color a little bit because an airless sprayer is not a great tool for smooth blending it. It has this cloudy texture. It's made for production and blasting lots of paint on the wall. But if our colors are close enough together, it's kind of like a dithered edge. A dithered edge is like when you have two colors and the edge is, is like my fingers, they go together like this and you can't really find the line in between them. So we're, we're doing something like that because the airless sprayer has this, this foggy texture. Progress has been really good. We're moving right along on this sky. I'm backing up so that we can see what we've got so far. And so Rich has been putting together that desert scene, just making it look awesome. And then, you know, we've got a, a lot of clouds to still paint on this sky. And that layer is just a layer of blue with our airless paint sprayer. And it's just misted over white. So we haven't painted any white clouds really, except for that ugly looking experiment up there. <laughs> and so our next step is to get up on here on this lift. We need some hard edges on the clouds up there. And so by that, you know, you can see how there, this bright cloud that my hand is, is over the top of, it has sharper edges. You can see that this edge here, if I can move my hand the right way, is a sharper edge than all of these blurry lines that are on uh, uh, surrounding it. So what you get is is good depth when you have that clouds that are closer with with the uh, or just less wispy clouds, you know, sharper edges in front of blurry edges. It's just a trick to achieve depth and make clouds look like they're at different distances. And so we're going to do that and we want the wispy look kind of like these here up here. We've got some you can see the, the little wispy details on the edges of these clouds to set them apart from, from just the, the hazy texture up there. So we need a special tool for that. And I've discovered recently that something with long hair works really well for this. So this is gonna be our, our paint tool for the ceiling. And, and I, this is the first time I've used something real big and spongy. I don't actually know what this is. Maybe, maybe some of you know who this character is. I, I found it at Target. And this long hair and the spongy texture is going to be a great tool for rolling it around and getting lots of little wispy lines. So we're going to give this a, a first time run, me and 
Rich here, he's all suited up and ready. Looks like, <laughs> looks like he's getting ready to disappear into the light there in his spacesuit. <laughs> all right, man. This takes the planning portion of doing the mural to a whole new level for, uh, for my standards. You've got a pencil on a stick so that you can reach a lot of area fast combined with the overhead projector. Old school. That's going to be our mountain right there. This is the beginning of our fourth week. It's Monday morning and Rich has made amazing progress once again on this corner with that big elephant and, and uh, adding details and colors into our foreground there and the the uh, stuffed animal idea, using little Foo Foo here for the clouds, did not work so well. That's what's left of our little animal. It looks more like roadkill at this point. And so here's you just kind of dry it on the side. <laughs> See, the problem with it was it was really good at first, but then the paint just compressed and doing a lot of clouds overhead, it was just a flat lump of paint. I, I was unable to make fast progress anyway. I, I feel like you can use anything, but the question is what is the best thing for a good look fast? So now I have hacked apart one of my nice brushes. I'm going to show you that here. And I feel like I'm getting much better results with this. I, I just chopped apart the bristles. You know, I, I did some bristles of every length. I chopped some really short. I chopped some uh, just halfway so that I I get a, a really a really broken apart texture with this. You can see how the, the end of it is not solid, but real, real stringy. So that's how I did those clouds up there. That's how I got all of the edges on these. And I feel like that's a, a much more realistic effect. Maybe not quite as softly blended, but the brush, the paintbrush is faster than the animal. So that's what I'll be using for the rest of the job. This is my wispy cloud brush. I've decided that it is now also my juniper brush. Some other news I finally you know a lot of you uh, may not be aware that I carried a flip phone all the way up until just recently I just got this this uh, smartphone I'm on Instagram I'm finally doing Instagram so I'm trying to post short little videos as we go about this job and and uh, as I learned to use the different apps that are on this crazy device you know I shouldn't have to put my face on a TV in order to talk to somebody but that's the way the world's going. The good part is I can put fun little videos up on Instagram, so I'm going to be trying to do that more. Just wanted to let you know, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that and uh, give me the honor of showing off for you in the future here on the YouTube channel. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next time.